What's going on guys? Bows Phoenix here and today we are finally taking a look at the gun lance in Monster Hunter World. Now conceptually this weapon isn't too terribly different from the regular lance. The main difference here though is that instead of poking you're shooting. Now obviously it's a lot more complicated than that so let me explain. The gun lance differs from the regular lance and that firstly there's a huge cannon on the end of it. Think of it like a giant rifle with a bayonet affixed to the end. Now with Gunlands, you trade devastating firepower over mobility and defense compared to the regular lands. I say defense because, at least mechanically speaking, there are no actual counterattacks with the Gunlands as there are with Lance, and the Gunlands shield is slightly weaker. If you had to think of them in terms of DPS and compare them side by side, the Gun Lance would generally be your burst DPS weapon, and the regular Lance would be more of a sustained DPS weapon. So in layman's terms, this means that with Gun Lance, you'll have huge spikes of damage, where with the regular Lance, it would just be a consistent stream of moderate damage. Now, normally I would do this near the end of the video, but I think it's important to mention this now. There are three Gun Lance shell types, and you should take each of these into account before making a gun lance as the shell type affects the way you use each gun lance. It also determines which optimal combo you'll be using when attacking, and we'll cover all of those in the moveset section of this video. Normal is our first gun lance shell type. It has five shells in the shortest shot range. Normal shells are the weakest of all gun lance shells and are best used to burst fire. Keep this in mind as we'll come back to it in the moveset portion. Long shell gun lances have the most powerful charge shot and longest range out of all three shell types. Long shell gun lances have three shots before reloading. And lastly, wide shell gun lances have a larger shot hitbox and only two shells to shoot before having to reload. Wide shells do the most damage for an uncharged shot out of the three gun lance types. Now, it's important to note that no matter what shell type you're using, all gun lances have the exact same moveset available to them, but each one has a different combo in that moveset that's best suited to it. So with that being said, let's take a look at the basic moveset for the gun lance overall, and I'll show you each gun lance's bread and butter combo. From neutral, we have a triple poke, triple triangle combo. Press triangle three times, poke three times. It's pretty simple stuff. Also note that just like with the regular lance, you can hop around after performing these attacks to reposition. Moving on though, pressing forward and triangle at the same time gives you the lunging up thrust, which is pretty much gun lance's only gap closer. You can go straight from this into your triple poke or any number of other attacks. Pressing circle gives you a shell attack. This is how you shoot your gun lance. You can perform a shell attack after most basic attacks. Remember too, the shots from the gun lance always do their full damage, no matter what monster part you hit. Also, after an attack or shell shot, you can hold circle to charge a shell. As you can guess, this gives the shell a bit of increased damage. If you press circle twice, you'll perform two shell shots in a row, and pressing circle a third time gives you the worm state cannon. This is a projectile with very short range that, when lodged into a monster, deals a few ticks of damage that ends in an explosion. You can think of this as a finisher, and it does roughly the same damage no matter what shell type you're using. To use another worm state cannon, you have to reload your gun lance. Note here that a quick reload only reloads shells, not a worm stake. Back on the melee side of things though, if you press triangle plus circle, you get a new melee attack, the rising slash. We can chain this into an overhead smash by pressing triangle afterwards, and if you press triangle again, you'll get the wide sweep. Pressing triangle or circle after the wide sweep will give you a worm stake. Additionally, if you press circle after the overhead smash instead of triangle, you'll get the burst fire attack. This fires every shell you have loaded, and afterwards you can perform a wide sweep by pressing triangle, or a worm state cannon by pressing circle. Holding R2 brings up your shield for guarding, and from guard, you can poke by pressing triangle, reload by pressing circle, or if you press triangle plus circle, you can use the wyvern fire attack. This is a very long cooldown, and you'll know it's ready to be used again when the tip of your lance stops glowing. If it glows for more than four hours, please see a doctor. To get a quick reload, press R2 and circle after just about any attack, and you can reload your shells mid-combo. Now, as I stated earlier, this doesn't reload your worm stake, and you can tell because the animations for quick reload and neutral reload are different. Plus, there's a helpful little worm stake icon in the top left-hand corner of the screen that tells you if one is loaded or not. Lastly, we have the slide attacks. Press triangle while sliding to a jumping attack, and while in the air, you can burst fire by pressing circle, 
stab by pressing triangle, or you can perform a slam attack by pressing R2. So now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's talk about optimal combos for each shell type. For normal shells, you'll want to open with a lunging up thrust if you need to close the gap, or if you're standing still, you can do a rising slash. Chain this into an overhead smash, and after that, press circle to burst fire. After the burst fire, press triangle again for a sweep, and then quick reload to start the combo over again. After the quick reload, you can press triangle and circle to bring you back into the overhead slash and into the burst fire, giving you an infinite combo. So again, it's lunging up thrust or rising slash into overhead smash, then burst fire, then sweep, then reload, then smash, then burst fire, then sweep, then reload. If you want to end with a finisher, you can always worm stake after the burst fire if you think you have enough time to land it. Wide gun lance is a bit more simple. The combo here is poke, shoot, shoot, quick reload. Don't try to shoot a third time because that'll give you a worm stake and you may not always want to do that. Plus, you'll have to do a regular reload and that'll mess up your rhythm. Now remember here that you've only got two shots with a wide gun lance and your uncharged shots are the most powerful out of all three types. If you're trying to reach a tail or a tall monster's head, you can do a rising slash and then shoot and that'll keep you in place. For a long shell gun lance, it's basically the same combo as wide gun lance, except here you'll be charging each shot and you can do three charge shots in a row, but if you don't have a large opening, any combination of poke and charge shot will do. Be careful when doing this though, as these charge shells can leave you open for a long time. It's because of this and the long shell subpar damage that this isn't a super popular form of gun lance. Normal and wide can often out DPS long, but that being said, all shell types are more than viable and some monsters are easy to fight with each different type. But as far as moveset goes, that's about everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at armor recommendations. For armor skills, you'll definitely want artillery as it increases the damage of your shells. Additionally, capacity boost is a huge plus, especially for normal shotgun lances as it increases your shell count by one. I'd consider these two skills to be mandatory, and I'd stay away from affinity skills because your shots can't crit. They'll always do the same amount of damage no matter where you hit the monster. Aside from that, guard skills and attack up, plus bonus damage to whatever element you're running with can also be helpful. Now, when building a gun lance, you'll have to decide which one to go to for yourself. We've already covered each lance shell type in great detail, but as for specific gun lance recommendations, I have a few for you. If you're going for normal shell, I would highly recommend the Rathian gun lance. This is considered one of the best gun lances in the game. Now for wide shell, I'd recommend the Juria Buster, and for long shell, I'm really enjoying the Toby Kadachi gun lance, which I was using in this video. And one last thing, you'll obviously always get a better setup from a mixed set, but I threw together the Dodogama set for gun lance, and it's been working out pretty well, especially with the blast status lance. The Anjanath set is also a decent full set if you want to try that out. But in closing, Gun Lance is a pretty neat weapon. If you like the Lance but feel like it lacks in power, the Gun Lance should scratch that itch for you. With the different shot types, it can feel a little overwhelming to get into, but hopefully I've cleared up any confusion. In full transparency here, I've really got to thank my Discord vet Rook for helping me put this info together. He's pretty much main Gun Lance since the game came out, and getting this info would have been a lot more difficult without his help. Anyway, if you learned something new to Today or just enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, and if you're new here, get subscribed so that you never miss a new video. Also, I'm now partnered with Into the AM, which is a dope as hell clothing company. They make all kinds of stuff from hoodies to hats and even leggings for your lady friends. You can visit the website by using my link in the description below, and the coupon code BALSPHOENIX will get you 10% off your order. Anything you buy helps out the channel directly, but that is all for today, guys. Until next time, I'm Bals Phoenix. I'll see you at the next one, and as always, Thank you so much for watching.